massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit Nepal on the morning of Saturday, 25 April, killing and injuring tens of thousands. Villages were flattened, buildings collapsed, and hundreds of thousands were left homeless or unable to return to damaged homes. This is Baburam Aryal, president of the Nepal chapter of the Internet Society. As he camped outside with his family, trying to sleep those first few nights after the quake, he couldn't help but think about how he could help with the recovery. It became clear that Nepal chapter of ISOC needed to be part of next phase in Nepal's history rebuilding. There's so much to do. Power still hasn't been restored. Communication towers are down and infrastructure in some areas is completely destroyed. In remote parts of the country, Nepal police officers and rescue personnel have described their problems of not having access to electricity and being unable to charge their mobile devices to communicate effectively. This is where I knew that we could have. We started with small things. I was asked by the president of the ISP Association of Nepal to coordinate with the Ministry of Information and Communication to make sure they have a regular supply of fuel for their BTS tower to continue the internet service. The members of our chapter are very truly diverse, including bankers, lawyers, media persons, writers, software developers, technical experts, government representatives, and security personnel. There are many ways we can help. After more than two hour drive from Kathmandu through village like Sipagat Bazaar, where almost all houses are leveled and what remains is clearly too dangerous to live in, we arrive in both Sipa, a tiny village where we deliver and install solar panels. Then we move to another village. We drive as far as we can, past mountains of debris and in constant fear of landslide. And when we can't drive any further, we walk 30 minutes up the steep mountain slope to the village of Talamarai. There is no electricity and so far no attempts have been there to reconnect the village. People of the village take over and carry the solar panel and the heavy battery. We install the panel and a grateful village now has electricity. Our next trip to help Nepal get back online takes us to Bhameshwar, formerly Charikot. Bajar. Although not as badly damaged as some places, many of the buildings is still standing in Bimisur shows cracks. We install a Wi-Fi device on the roof of a concrete building near a cluster of tents. We visit a local radio station, Hamro Radio FM. The building with the antenna still stands but the studio is moved to two tents because the building where the studio is located underneath the broadcasting tower shows cracks. In the tent, I met Lakshmi Baksnet an 18-year-old newsreader. For checking news updates, we rely on internet, she says, and then we broadcast it via radio. The other internet services are often unreliable, so the free internet is important. The school ground is now also a tented camp for earthquake victims. One of them is Subhas Subedi. Subhas sits in his tent surfing the internet using a wireless connection to the mobile 3G network. It's expensive and he is pleased to hear that free Wi-Fi is on its way. The internet is keeping Nepal in palm and in touch with friends and family. And this is just the beginning. The Indian society in Nepal still has much to do.